Hello, my name is Bill Blissett. I am the organizing guy. I am a professional organizer. I've been a professional organizer for well over 15 years. I am a longtime member of the National Association of Professional Organizers. Yes, we're that organized. We have an association. And also, <clears throat> I've had the distinction of being certified nationally as a professional organizer, I was in the very first group. It was a small group of us that were uh, able to become certified. Uh, no small feat, let me assure you. So that is a, a, a thing of pride for many of us. My business, I base both here in the Twin Cities and also out in Los Angeles, California. I like to say I get the best of both worlds, being a mid-coastal person. And yes, I am here during the winter. I know how to wear long johns. I'm from here. And I love to cross-country ski, so this year has been kind of a bummer. But everybody else is loving the mild weather, I know. This seminar, <clears throat> organizing a home improvement project, will last approximately one hour. And we've also allowed time up to a half hour after that for questions and answers. When I was invited to speak here, I thought that it would be appropriate to speak about organizing for a remodeling project, as opposed to just general organizing information. Now, many of the tips and the general principles that we'll be talking about in organizing for a remodeling project also apply to any other organizing project that you may have. So this will cross-platform, as they like to say. Also in the question and answer time that we have at the end, feel free, and I encourage you to ask any type of organizing question that you may have about any of your organizing challenges be it involving a remodeling project or not. I love the question and answer time. It's always great fun, and people learn a lot, which is why I'm here. Organizing for a modeling project or a home improvement project. Let's think about this. <clears throat> How many people here, if you would please show with your hands, are planning to do a home improvement or a modeling project. Who's, well, you folks came to the right place. Very good, very good. Some other questions, I just want to find out who you people are. <clears throat> Excuse me. How many of you are going to be hiring the services of a general contractor? Quite a few of you. How many people are going to be doing the role of the general contractor in which you'll be hiring out different subspecialties? Okay, so I've, good, all right, we've got those people. Who are my DIYers, the do-it-yourself? Who's doing the whole project on their own? Okay, you have my, really, my admiration. Well done, people, good luck. You must have good tools, that's all I could say. Let's talk about organizing for a modeling project. What are the goals of having a well-organized remodeling project or home improvement project? Well, <clears throat> the goals, our first one should be to reduce the stress associated with a remodeling project. Reduce the stress the anxiety. If you are well organized, if you have good pre-planning, I guarantee you 
that you will have a far less stressful remodel than if you don't get organized ahead of time. I've seen it time and time again. And this is a really worthwhile goal. I think the most important goal is to reduce the stress and make this project as enjoyable and delightful to live through as you possibly can. Another goal, <clears throat> to maximize the benefits of the remodeled space. Maximize the benefits. So often in our mind's eye, we'll have some kind of picture of what we want the new space to look like. What we're here to talk about today is not so much what it looks like, that's the role of the designer. What we're here to talk about is how it works. That's the role of an organizer. How does it work? What goes where? I've always thought that it would be fun <clears throat> for one of those HGTV shows to have one called What's Behind the Cupboard Door. How many of you, your homes may, as you walk through the door, seem pretty nice that you could have company at almost any time? But God help them if they open up one of those doors. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I think of those cartoons where the doors open and this avalanche of stuff comes down. What's behind the cupboard door? That's what we're talking about in our remodeling project. Again, the designers design what it's going to look like. The organizers figure out what's going in where and where that is. That's what we're going to be talking about. That's our goal. The next one, which I think is just icing on the cake, richly deserved, is to get moved into the newly remodeled space as quickly as possible. You have spent a lot of money. You've spent a lot of time on this. You want to get in that space and start living in it to the fullest as quickly as possible, right? So to do that, if you, before the project begins, focus on organizing, being well organized, getting into the remodeling project, on the back end, you'll be able to move in that much quicker. There are clients that I've moved back into their newly remodeled space in less than a day because we had everything so well organized ahead of time. That's the goal that I want you to enjoy, right? Get the most bang for your buck. Got another question for you all, just so I can keep learning about who's doing what. How many people here <clears throat> are doing a re kitchen remodel project? OK, how about a bathroom? Well, OK then. That's a little, that's interesting. The bathrooms outnumber the kitchens. You win. How about a basement remodel? Who's doing a basement remodel? Ooh, we got some strong contenders here too. What haven't I mentioned? What other remodeling projects are you working on if it's not a kitchen, a bath, or a basement? Add-ons? OK. <clears throat> add-on, what kind of an add-on? A porch. Oh, nice. Really nice. He said he's doing an add-on, a three or four season porch. What else? What other projects, remodeling projects? Are there any other remodeling projects that are being done besides kitchen, bath, basement, and porches? Going once. Combining two condos into one. So you're knocking walls out? Oh, fascinating. Lucky you. That's a good one. That's a very good one. Are you living in one while you're working on the other? So you're not there. OK. How many people here are leaving where they're living right now for the remodeling project? So let's say you're doing your kitchen. Are you moving into another house while that's being done? Anybody doing that, moving to another location? OK. 
you're going to be living in the space that's being remodeled. Good, 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 good. Then you're in the right place. This is the right seminar for you. Design, organize the remodel space. Make it present and future proof. Before we start talking about packing up and organizing that, let's talk about the design. This is critical. Let's talk about that design. I'm sure everybody, right? Raise your hand if you've got an idea, a picture in your mind, what it's going to look like. Yep, that's almost everybody. Typically, what we're thinking of when we're working on a remodeling project, the picture that we have in our heads is oftentimes a picture that we've seen in a magazine or several magazines or on the web. Or we've gone and we've been working with a designer and they've created printouts, blueprints for us to look at. And that's what we see in our mind's eye. Let's talk about how that looks. Most importantly, what's inside. We need to make it present proof so that we can move everything into it. We also need to make it future proof because more stuff is going to be coming into our lives, right? That's who we are. We're Americans. We're consumers. We will have more books. We will have more CDs or DVDs, right? We will, if you're doing a kitchen, good chance that you'll be running out for new pots and pans for that newly redesigned kitchen. So we need to make this present and future proof. When you are trying to figure out how your new space is going to be organized, what is going to go where, the best thing that you can do is, in your present situation, get like with like. Do a pre-organization of the stuff that you have. Now, this will help you in, in more ways than one. There's an axiom in my line of work that if it's cluttered before, it's going to be cluttered after. So if you're living in a cluttered space now, oh, I'm seeing some frowns, it's going to be a cluttered space afterwards because you haven't taken the time to get it organized. Now, what do I mean by getting it organized? I like to use the phrase, like with like. You're pre-organizing the new space, and you're letting like with like be your guide. Let me explain this further. Let's say you're doing your kitchen. And in your kitchen, you store now, in the present, and in your newly remodeled kitchen, you plan on storing vases. Right? We all have them. We've got a vase collection of various sizes, shapes, scopes, etc. So let's just take that as an example. Vases. How many vases do you have? I don't know. Six? Uh, maybe I have five. Well, guess what? I've done this time and time again with clients. And we think that we only have four vases, five vases, six vases. Oh, I guess seven, eight. Oh, wait. I forgot, the cupboard above the fridge has vases in it. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, right? And then, oh, oh, that's right. There's some out in the garage, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. And then I've got some in the basement, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. I own 27 vases, <laughs> right? <clears throat> and your first answer to that question was, oh, about six. So this is why I say organize like with like to find out what you really have. Now, many of us, when we're remodeling, we're remodeling because the space that we're using is too confining. We're typically making it larger. Or we're increasing, maybe we can't change the footprint, but we're increasing the storage capacity, the workflow of that area. Like with like, 
know what you're going to have. So if you're working in kind of a constricted space now, it may be because of necessity that you have similar items in different places. So it's very hard, just like with the vases, you'll say, I only have six of those. Unless you get them together, you don't have a true and accurate sense of exactly what you have and what type of capacity you need to design in to your newly remodeled space. Like with like. Pull like with like together. Organize that way so that you can get a true picture of just exactly what you have. Another trick that I like to use is taking a photograph. And it's so simple now with digital cameras. Take a photograph of these groupings of items that you're creating in this pre-organization. That way, when you're sitting down designing, either by yourself or with your designer, you have those items to refer to. Oh, that's right. I've got the vases. I've got the pots and pans. Yes, I've got everyday dishes, but I also have these dishes as well. I like to store at least 12 rolls of toilet paper under my sink because I am a Costco member, right? And because I'm a Costco member, I have two of everything. And each one is ginormous. So we need to work that into our space, like with like. How many bottles of hand lotion, you people who are redoing your bathrooms, how many bottles of hand lotion do you have? Oh, I'm hearing some chuckling because I think the number is supersized, shall we say, right? <clears throat> it's not until you start getting all of it together that you realize, A, that you're a hand lotion hoarder, and B, you're going to need an entire drawer or cupboard just for your hand lotion category if you're going to choose to hang on to it all. Right? Like with like. Get similar items together. This is crucial, a crucial step for a well-organized and thoughtful design so that your end product, so that you're not putting things, well, I guess this will go here. You know way ahead of time what is going to go where and how much you have. Yes, indeed, I made this cupboard this big. All my hand lotion bottles from Costco can stand upright. So it's very easy to use. Not only is this step helpful for your design process, this step is also very helpful for what's going to be coming up later, and we'll be talking about that shortly, the packing up, right? Because you're going to have to evacuate the space that's being remodeled. You'll need to empty everything for demolition. So when you have things grouped like with like, it's a much easier process to pack. And you'll be able to pack in an organized way because you already have things organized like with like. Letting go. Oh, gosh. This is the hard one. This is the hard one. Too often, people, when they uh, find out that I'm a professional organizer, their immediate reaction is, oh, I know I have stuff that I should be throwing away. Somehow, organizing is associated with letting go. It's not always the case. Organizing is more importantly like with like than letting go. But it may be that once you have like with like, you'll discover that you can let go, and that it's not a painful process. I'm going to go back to those bases, all right, as an example. We started with six. We ended up with 27. Of those 27 bases that it, we found out that we actually owned, a good majority of them were the very thin, cheap vases that you got with flowers from the florist. They're a disposable item for florists. They're giveaway items. And yet you hang on to it because it's a good vase. But it's easy to let go once you see them all together. You realize that, oh, the wedding present vase 
the vase that I bought when I was in Florida, whatever, those are the ones that are really important. And the ones that you got with the flowers aren't so important. And when you see them all together, you go, do I want to design in a cupboard big enough for all of these? Or will I start limiting myself so that I don't need as large a space? That's letting go. For those of you who are doing kitchen remodelings, get your Tupperware all in one place. And then just for fun, match the lids with the containers. <laughs> I know you're laughing because you're thinking, that's not fun. Well, <clears throat> I'm an organizer, so for me it is a good time. But um, there's something so soothingly Fisher Price about putting lids on containers, I find. Letting go. OK, you ended up, and I don't know how this happens. It's that dang Murphy and his law that states there will be mismatched numbers of containers from lids, right? So now's the time when you're organizing like with like. Now's a good time to let go of some of those easier things to let go. I'd also like to challenge you to let go of some of those harder things, too. I'm staying in the kitchen right now, and I'm thinking of the potato masher that the handle doesn't really stay on. It rotates. You know, it stops sticking. It spins around. And so the darn thing is really not fun to use. And you've bought another new one, and you also bought a ricer, right? But this other one, the one with the rotating handle, was your grandmother's. <laughs> she would be just fine if you let that go. As a matter of fact, she would give you her blessing. She would say, in good old Minnesotan, she'd say, oh, golly, you got a much better one now. You can let go of that old one. Take it to the church for the rummage sale, <laughs> right? So I'm going to challenge you here in the letting go. There are the easy ones, the Tupperwares, the vases, etc. The harder ones, come on, now's the time, right? Think about letting it go. You will not have to pack it up. You will not have to unpack it. You will not have to design in space to hold it. It'll make everything so much easier. Letting go. Measuring. Measuring. This is critical. This is a critical tool, your measuring tape. You're going to want to have this just attached to you, right? Or close at hand, with you at all times. If you're doing a closet, how wide is that coat hanger? And how wide is that coat hanger with a big bulky coat on it? If you're working in the kitchen, how big is that biggest lid for that biggest pan? How big is that biggest pan? What kind of a storage space, what size of a storage space will I need for that biggest pan? Would a drawer work better where I can have things vertical? Yes, that's always perfect if you have the space for that. Or will you have a cupboard with a pullout? And is that pullout large enough for that big frying pan? The measuring tape. We organize like with like. How much room does fill in the blank with whatever category it is? Take, measure it, so then you'll know. Jot it down. If you're taking those pictures and if you print them out, you can write the dimensions right on the picture. What is the height of the tallest vase? How big is your biggest cookie sheet? How many hairbrushes and combs do you have? What does go into that vanity drawer? Not everything. Like in the old days where it was all so messy you couldn't use it easily. Your new one is going to be better organized than that. 
what is going to go in that drawer and what's not. Or if you're choosing a pedestal, what's going to happen to all that stuff that you used to have in a vanity? How big a, a container are you going to need? Right? Measuring. Here's another one, and I've got this in the handout. How many CDs, and a lot of times people are creating entertainment centers, how many CDs and DVDs do you own right now? How many will you own in 10 years? Ooh, that's a good one. Most of us keep buying more DVDs. CDs, they're slowing down, but DVDs, we're still buying DVDs. Now we're getting Blu-ray. Pretty soon we'll be getting 3D DVDs. So if you're organizing a space for those CDs and DVDs, not only do you need the space for what you have, but you're going to organize, you're going to create enough space for what you will have so that you aren't building in a clutter maker. A clutter maker is something that fills up too quickly. Right? That's the design element of it. Now, we've organized like with like. We've taken our measurements so that we can make a thoughtful design so that we can pre-organize in our mind and on our design what is going to go where. Now we're going to have to prepare because everybody here said that they were going to be living in the space that's being remodeled. Now we have to prepare, excuse me, prepare temporary quarters. This is especially true if you're um, remodeling a kitchen. You'll need a temporary kitchen. I think you're still going to be eating, even during the remodel, right? So you're going to need a place. You'll probably want a toaster, a microwave, a fridge of varying of whatever size. Maybe you're using your old fridge, or you've got a small dorm fridge, a hot plate if you don't have access to a stove. How many dishes are you going to use in your temporary location? the temporary living quarters. To create your temporary living space, use just what you need. I'm going back to the kitchen, because we've got a number of kitchen remodels. You don't need to bring the Christmas dishes with you, right? You don't need to bring 18 coffee cups with you to the temporary storage area. I'm a camper, a backpack tent camper, and also an RV camper. So I've learned through that to only bring what I'm going to use. What's the minimal that we can get away with? Two plates, two forks, two knives, two glasses. Think of the same thing for your temporary situation. Be very frugal, less is going to be a lot easier to deal with and to maintain than more. I'll have a caveat to that in just a second. So use what you need, but no more. Think about it. Oh, I can get by without all of these kitchen towels. I don't need all of them in the temporary place. I can get by with three of them. Here's something. Assume that the remodeling project will take longer than what you think. Again, it's that guy called Murphy and his darn law. It will take longer. That refrigerator that you ordered, oh, there's been a glitch, and it's going to be another three weeks before it shows up. Right? Something. Something is going to happen. Even though your contractor promised you a hard out of March 31st, Actually, because so-and-so got the flu, it's not going to be until April 7th. I mean, it's beautiful if it is done on time, but you do need to be prepared for it to take longer. And this is why the organizing is so important, so that you can sustain yourself for a little bit longer. Now, to this end, then I say, if you were thinking of, for my kitchen remodelers, if you were going to eat off of paper plates and drink out of paper cups, Really? For that long? Think twice about that, because it will be quite a bit of time. You may want the minimum number of plates, hard, real plates, that you can use. 
so that you aren't always every single bite of food that you have eating off of paper disposables. These temporary spaces that you're creating to live out of while the other space is being remodeled, try to use what you already have. Too often, creating this temporary living area turns into a shopportunity. And people rush out to buy things that they can use in this temporary space. Oh, I'll get different dishes, or I'll get, I'll get all plastic, or I'll get special containers and that kind of thing. Be very careful that if you do that, that you have an end game, an exit strategy for those pieces that you're going to get. Where are they going in the new space? Have you thought of, you know, are they designed into the new space? So be very frugal with those types of purchases. Use what you have as much as possible. An old table that you could move, sit with it, put a tablecloth on it, instead of rushing out to buy a new table, that kind of thing. You'll have less stuff to deal with once you get back into the new space. The next phase. <clears throat> Let's just review for a bit. We've thoughtfully pre-organized our new space in the design process. We've gathered like with like to help us with that process. And then also, it's made it easier for us to create our temporary living space because things were like with like, and we can go right to the things that we need, grab what we need to create that space. Now we have to pack up what's left, right? Because of the demos coming. So everything's got to go. Here's some tips. For packing what is left like with like, like with like. Remember our goal? One of our goals was to move into the new location as quickly as possible. I do a lot of relocations, a lot of moves for people. And if they haven't hired me for the pre end, if I'm just in on the back end, it's kind of a nightmare because you never know when you open up the box what you're getting into. It may say kitchen. But that's a very loose term, right? And you think, oh, well, this, it's a kitchen box. I'll be able to empty this. And then you realize that there are many different categories of things. So the unpacking of the box takes that much longer. If you pack your boxes like with like, then you'll be able to unpack much quicker. Here's an example. <laughs> coffee cups. I didn't pollute it with, and a couple of spatulas. No, I just, the whole box is coffee cups. And guess what? Almost all of us have that many coffee cups that we can smil fill a small box, right? Yeah, yeah, we're all guilty of owning too many coffee cups. Notice how on this box, I labeled two connecting sides. This is a trick that I've learned from moving people. Uh, many people think of writing what's in the box on the top of the box. Oops, the problem with that is that things usually get set on top of it. Boxes usually end up being stacked, or something is thrown on top of it. Then you don't know what's in it. But if it's labeled on two connecting sides, no matter how many boxes are stacked up, you can see what it is. And if the boxes are stacked long way or short way, it doesn't matter because you're covered. You'll always be able to see the label. I have found over the years that it is well worth it to use a few more boxes to keep my categories pure, I like to say, than mixing items together just to fill a box. Here's another hint that I've learned uh, uh, in the past few years. If you're looking for boxes for packing, Home Depot. Excuse me, Lowe's and Menards. But Home Depot has the best prices on moving boxes, I have found, and moving supplies. About half price of anybody else. That said, 
go ahead and buy a few extra small boxes to keep your categories pure. Here's another thing, that little trickster Murphy and his law, you're going to have your temporary living space and you're going to realize, oh darn it, I should have, I also need the, so the better organized your boxes are and the less cluttered your boxes are that you're storing things in, the easier it is for you to get at that item that you may need, that you may want to get to during the remodeling process. So good labeling. These are 1.5 cubic feet boxes. They're called a book box. They hold a lot of, even though they're their smaller box, they hold a lot of stuff. And the beauty of them is that anybody can lift a box of that size. Right? It's not a honeydew like those bigger boxes can be. They're just so bulky that they aren't friendly at all. <sighs> record keeping. Yeah, record keeping. Here's the deal. Remodeling projects, they generate a phenomenal amount of paperwork. Think about it. Just from the get-go, you've got proposals, right? designs. You'll have other categories. Just be prepared for an onslaught of paperwork. So what I like to recommend is either prepare your existing filing system or create a new one. In this case, what I'm showing here is a little portable filing cabinet that you can dedicate just to the remodeling project. It's got a handle so it can go anywhere you go. and it's closed, help keep it clean inside. Now inside, hanging files. These are the categories that I would suggest that you use. Estimates and proposals. You'll have many of those, right? From all the different contractors. Um, and also, uh, if you're getting new appliances, you, I'm sure you'll be going to different places, pricing and shopping around. So this is the one place that you can keep all that paperwork. Invoices. Sadly, you're going to have a lot of those. Manuals. Like vases, proliferate. You'll have a lot of manuals with the new toys and gadgets that you're getting. Receipts. One place to put all those receipts. Here's another tip from a professional organizer's point of view that I would like to share with you, and this is critical. We all, in a remodeling project, and well, this is, goes with just any project, but we're speaking of remodeling here, we jot things down. We're on the phone, we jot things down. We're in a store, we jot things down. We're minding our own business, all of a sudden an idea pops in our head, we jot things down. If we have multiple notepads, if we have stacks of post-its, it's, you're creating chaos and frustration and bitterness. Where is the that I wrote, right? Because they're all over the place. Once you use more than one notebook, they start scattering to all ends of your earth. Maybe it's in the car, maybe it's in the bedroom, maybe it's in the basement. Use one, 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 one notebook. Everybody? One. Make it a good one, right? <clears throat> and this is of your choice. It can be a three ring with some pockets so you can stuff up stuff in there. It could be a spiral. It could be a fancy leather covered one. It could be a legal pad. Whichever piece that you choose, make it one. And then that is your remodeling Bible. One-stop shopping. When you're going out to do your shopping, one thing. When you're coming home and you're discussing what you've learned, one thing. Trust me, this is going to save yourself hours and hours of aggravation by just limiting yourself to one notebook. Here's something that I wanted to point out in the filing system. 
I don't know if you're all familiar with it. A standard file is V-shaped at the bottom and holds a few things. This is what's called a box bottom hanging file. Notice how the bottom of it is square. It's square at the bottom, so it can hold a lot more stuff in it as opposed to growing out of it. I'm sure for manuals, you'll want to use a box bottom, maybe even some of the other categories. But that's at any office superstore. They're very inexpensive, the box bottoms. And you'll find not only for this project, but for your general filing. I just wanted to share that little tip, how handy those box bottom hanging files are. Here's something else. You're probably, nine times out of 10, you're going to end up in your remodeling project with a lot of samples. You're going to have samples of hardware. You're going to have samples of fabric. You're going to have samples of tile. You'll have samples of brick. You'll have samples of wood. You'll have a lot of samples. What did I do with that? Where did that, where did that sample go? Oh, geez. Now I've got to go get fill in the blank to go with fill in the blank. Where did that, where did my paint color chip go so I can go get the pillows or whatever, right? One container. One container. This happens to be an 18 quart size Sterilite container. Love them with the snap handles and the clear sides. Maybe yours, if it's a larger project, you'll want a bigger Sterilite container. One container. Now, here's something else that I want to share with you about remodeling. You may know this already, but you may not. So I'm going to talk about this. I'm not a really good photographer, but you might be able to see the lid of this container is just covered in dust. I don't know if you can see that. It's so thick that I could have easily written my name in it, right? And this was when you're doing a remodeling project, if you're doing it yourself or if you're having uh, contractors do it. They will tape off all openings. They'll use plastic sheeting and tape. Even with that careful sheeting and taping, you're going to find dust at the complete opposite end of the house from this project, guaranteed. It's wild. I don't know how it happens. I swear, if you're doing drywall, that dust gets into sealed cans somehow. You open up tomatoes, and there's drywall dust. Well, this container was behind one of those plastic walls. It should have been clean, but it's not. So the point I'm making is that be prepared for that dust in your entire home. So I urge you to go through the house with an eye to we're in battle stations. This is going to get messy. So if you're the type of people who has a lot of framed photos sitting out, a lot of knickknacks, a lot of soft things. If you're a pillow freak, you may think about packing that away during the remodeling project to save you a lot of cleaning time during it and a lot of cleaning time after. Think lean. Think lean. Going over what we started a while back with what we started. We want to prepare our design of our newly remodeled space to be as well organized as it can possibly be. To do that, we think of and we plan what is going where in that new space. What is going in that drawer? Your designer may come back with this beautiful drawing may have um, five drawers in your new kitchen. What's going to go into those drawers? Well, uh, bags and wraps, perhaps. Um, kitchen towels. What else would go in a drawer? Silverware. What else? Utensils. What else? Hot pads. What else? Anything else? Pots and pans. OK, oops, we're up to six drawers. See my point? So if they come back with a five-drawer design, you say, wait a minute, I need six. Back to the drawing board. So we're thinking ahead. We're planning what's going in where. 
so we get the best design possible. We're going to create temporary spaces for us to live out of during the remodeling project. We'll bring as little as we need, but as much as we need to get by during that time, because it will take longer than we probably expect. When we pack up what's remaining as we're getting the space ready for the demolish, for the demo, like with like, even if you end up using a few more boxes, like with like, so that when you're done, you can unpack quickly, easily, and start enjoying that new space. That's what we've been talking about so far. Now I'd like to find out if anybody has any questions, either about organizing a remodeling project or about organizing in general. Hmm, I see very thoughtful looks. OK, the question was, <clears throat> she asked, they're contemplating putting in an under-the-counter microwave. And she's asking for my reaction to that. Um, let's, let's think about this together. And, and I'm, uh, you're sitting down, so it's easier for me. I've got, what are you going to microwave? OK, vegetables. Well, let's start with the vegetables. So I've got my container, I've got a lid, I've got, oops, I better put it back down so that I can press the button to open it. All right, so here we go. So we get that in there. And now, all right, I don't know about you guys, but I'm getting older. These are trifocals. How are your eyes? Bifocals. Well, OK. Hang on, kid, it's coming, the tries. That's all I'm saying. So then, so then you're going to set the microwave. Oh, boy. Hang on, I gotta get down here. <laughs> now, microwaves, no two are alike, right? They're like snowflakes. The control panels, <laughs> they all work differently. No, it's not popcorn. <laughs> okay. No, I, it won't let me do that. Oh, there we go. Okay. Whoa, okay. No, I think that's a great idea. Really, I would put it down there. Oh, you're so fun. Any other questions? If you were a coffee cup only kind of gal, then maybe, because you'd learn, right? But if you do more than just reheating of the coffee, it may, you may not stop using it because it's so inconvenient. Is there any way that you can have a shelf and slide it in. All right, OK, think about that. Some people have those over the range microwave, you know, whatever. All right, he asked, is it better to hire a general contractor or to hire the subs yourself? Um, Yeah, OK. The answer to that is it depends, right? And what it depends on is this, the scratch. A general contractor is always going to cost more than if you take on the role of being a general contractor, contractor and hire the subs yourself. Because rightly so, they get paid for the work that they do. But then they get a markup on everything. What you're guaranteed or what you should be guaranteed, and I hope everybody gets at least three estimates if you're hiring a general, what they should guarantee you is uh, a coordination of activities so that they have a time flow, that things are arriving in time for them to be used, that their subcontractors are coming when they need to be there, and not the whole project has to stop because we're waiting for Joe the plumber, right? If you're doing the subs yourself, you lose some of that control because you don't have established relationships with those subcontractors that a general contractor has. A general contractor can, with the sub, say, you better show up Monday at 6 or I'm not going to use you again. Whereas if you're doing hiring the subs yourself, you don't have that kind of clout. 
right? So um, there's no right or wrong for that. It depends on what your budget is. Does that answer your question? You're welcome. Anybody else have a question? Again, either about remodeling or just organizing in general. OK, thank you. The question was, for organizing a garage, do I have a preference for the type of container that's used for storing things, especially if it's an unheated garage? I'll say in general, and this holds true for garages as well as any space, for containers, and it's all about containers, organizing is. Square is better than round because it maximizes the use of space. Clear is better than opaque. Rubbermaid does make those roughnecks that are very, very, I mean, Rubbermaid, everything is such high quality that they do. But it's opaque, right? It's blue or green or whatever the color is, so you can't see what's inside it. Now, everything should be well labeled. Any container that you have, no matter what kind of container, should have a label on it for easy recognition. And yes, if you're using rough neck containers, you can put a label on it. I prefer to have double easy access, and that's why I like clear containers, because not only can you see the label, but you can see through and see what's in there. So you have two chances of getting that information and processing that information. You'll get that twice as fast. You'll be able to, oh, that's the birthday party stuff. That's Christmas. That's Halloween, because you know, not only can you read, but you can see. So I prefer that. I'm frugal. I'm from Minnesota. I love Sterilite from Target. Target, it's a Minnesota company. What's not to like, right? Good prices, and you can. it's always available, too, which is a good thing. You don't have to worry about, oh, they won't have it next time. So. Does that answer your question? Good. Any other questions? One in the back. What's the best way to organize a basement that is good for storage and for an occasional guest room? Did I hear you right? Are you, pl and crafting. Ah, okay, what I'm, she's asking about storage, guest room, crafting, and man cave. So we've got four areas. <clears throat> I would say four rooms. If it's a mega room, then she asks, what if it's a mega room? Then I would create four areas, four rooms. And you can uh, suggest a division, or you can create a division. Do you know what I'm saying? You can put in the studs and make walls if you want to. Or if you want to leave it open, you can create that illusion of separation by the types of furniture that you have. Um, a quick uh, example of that is um, those, I just love them, those plastic shelf units that you can buy at Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, Target, Staples, you know, that you assemble in just five seconds. You can create a wall of those. Or if you want to, you can get those shelves that are uh, like restaurant style shelves. They sell those too. They're the shiny metal. You know what I'm talking about? The shelving units, right? You can create a wall of those, fill those with your sterilite containers, and you've created a wall, right? Um, you may or may not want them on wheels, that separation. The advantage of wheels is that you can move them for cleaning, easy cleaning underneath. Or you may say, oh, I'm not going to worry about that. I just I'll go with the less expensive, non-wheeled types of shelves. So that's a good one. Um, draperies. You can create a wall with drapes. You can create a wall with sheets used as drapes. And you don't have to go out and buy new. You can buy used or, um, uh, well, my favorite place in the world, Target. You can get shower curtains. They have really cool shower curtains. 
you can create a separation with a shower curtain. It doesn't have to be a full wall either. You can, either, you can do knee walls too to give you that sense of separation. Um, you probably do want, though, to mask the man cave as much as possible, right? Um, and for that, you can uh, either use the aforementioned types of dividers. Um, you can also hang art pieces, posters, paintings, whatever, you know, a couple of eye hooks in the ceiling, drop them down, and that hanging there is your wall, your separation. But you want that, you want a, some type of physical separation so that objects don't migrate to where they don't belong. Especially in your case, if you want an area to be a guest room, you want to keep that as isolated as possible so that when company comes, it's not a big deal to get it ready for them. All you have to do is just a little freshen up, not shovel the place out. Fun question, thank you. I see a hand raised back here. Quick tips on paper. Oh, you're funny, okay. Mm -hmm. She asked if I had any quick tips about organizing paper. Before I get into that, let me just say this, that I do half day seminars just on paper alone. And in those seminars, I always say, it's easier, it's often easier and quicker to organize an entire job than it is to organize paper. And I say that because in a garage, we typically have a number of large items. A snowblower, those things are honkers. A, um, a lawnmower, a wheelbarrow, right? Garbage cans, we've got these big things that the decisions are pretty much no-brainers. Snowblower, although not this year so much, but usually, yeah, gonna keep that snowblower. Lawnmower, great in the summer, right? So those decisions are easy and quick, and before you know it, half of your garage is done. A stack of paper, now I'm talking about eight and a half by 11. A stack of paper approximately this high is almost about a thousand pieces of paper. That means a thousand decisions. Keep, toss, don't know, right, are the big categories. So paper organizing is inherently slower. When I teach my seminars on paper organizing, I also teach other types of organizing, and I have my uh, attendees take on another organizing project first before they start into the paper so that they can exercise those organizing muscles, stretch those out, and feel success. So I often have them do their junk drawer first or their utensil drawer. Definitely their pencil drawers. I have them do that first before they go into the paper. That said, I just gave away the beans. Keep, toss, maybe. That is, in, a, in, a, in the brief amount of time that we can talk about paper, that probably is the most important thing that I can share with you right now, is as you're doing your first sort, keep, toss, maybe. And that maybe is wonderful because you don't have to spend a lot of time wondering, should I, shouldn't I, should I, blah, 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 maybe. I also encourage, whenever you're doing organizing projects, have upbeat music playing. I do this on the corporate level. I've worked at the Tower and Target. I consult with Mattel out in California. High level executives, we have music going. Certainly have it going in your home. Upbeat music with a good beat to keep you moving. You've got some papers. Keep toss maybe, 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 keep toss maybe. I don't know what to do with this. Uh, hey, you just lost eight measures of music there. That's why we have the maybe, so that you can keep it going. All right? I just lost my mom. Uh, she just died this past December, and she was wonderful um, in, uh, in conveying and uh, uh, letting it be known to everyone that 
her stuff was interesting to her, not to anybody else. Well, you fan through it. <clears throat> My mom was a cash squirrel, it turns out. Who knew? A 10 here, a 20 there, here's some quarters. <laughs> it, really, uh, it's just like, at one point out loud, I'm like, oh, come on. Really? More cash? <laughs> yes, yes, exactly, exactly. So all the more reason for you to keep it a good tempo because you've got an extraordinary stuff to mine. Clear the decks. Any other questions? How we, we're doing so well on time. Thank you. Any other questions? There's a hand raised. We're sticking with paperwork, obviously, if we're talking about shredders. She said, what about shredding? If you stick it through the shredder, it's going to take forever. Yes, it will. So that's why I use a paper grocery bag that with a big Sharpie, I write shred on two connecting sides, right? So no matter which way the bag is set up, you can see that it says shred on it. And I fill that bag. And then the next bag. And then the next bag. And you keep filling those bags until you have critical mass. And then you either coerce somebody into doing that. Do you have any kids? Ah, oh, darn. Because, you know, sometimes you can get them to work for food or something, you know. <laughs> I'll feed you dinner. OK. Um, uh, there are so many shredding services out there. There are ones that will come to your home and shred right in front of you. There are others where you take it to them and they'll shred. And if you use a commercial shredder, it's kind of jaw-dropping what it can crunch through. You can put in whole uh, CDs, those old, um, what were those, zip drives? Remember those old zip drives? And floppies, floppies, zip drives. I mean, paper clips, pff, that's nothing to these guys, you know? So it's pretty amazing what they just, and it's all gone. So. So that's what I would recommend. There's so many, uh, and you can call around and get estimates and find out what it is, because there are so many services. Now, I'm, I'm not familiar with Bloomington. Bloomington might have a shredding opportunity, right? So, so you're right. You don't want shredding to slow you down. So you put it in a shred bag so that you can keep moving to the beat. Any other questions? How are we doing? Oh, there's one. <clears throat> I was just asked, what, is my, what was my education? Um, you're, uh, well, I went to the University of Minnesota. That's where I got my bachelor's. Um, how I got my education as an organizer is what I'm guessing you're asking. Um, I uh, started off self-taught. That's uh, how pretty much everybody starts in. And then um, once I found out about the association, NAPO, the National Association of Professional Organizers, um, I found out that there were other organizers that I could work with. So on the job experience, working with other organizers, there are a proliferation of classes to take now. Um, there's web learning. There's on-site learning. Uh, teleconference learning. Um, uh, there's a lot of books, although I, I really haven't found a book yet that I truly endorse. But for the certification process, we had to read about 22 books. And um, there's a lot of books out there that, unfortunately, uh, what I found is that there were just little bits and pieces. You have to buy the whole book just to get a few bits and pieces. Um, uh, so that's. That's it, classes. We have continuing ed credits that we have to keep up with, that kind of thing. She asked if I travel all over. Well, I do travel uh, between here and Los Angeles, definitely. And then I do have opportunities to speak in other parts of the country as well. And then I have clients who uh, fly me into different locations. I have clients in Boston. I had a client at Duke University for a while. He was getting his MBA there. So I was in the Raleigh-Durham area for a couple years. And then I've got clients in Florida. And where else am I? I'm trying to think of the other places I go to. Here, of course, LA. Yeah, it's, 
Do I move all over? Um, I, I'll fly to different places, yes. But I have a house here and a house there, out in LA. So that's why I bounce back and forth. You're welcome. You're welcome. I'm very fortunate. I get, uh, LA is a wonderful place if you haven't been, but it's very tiring, all the traffic. So after a while, you got to get out of there. And I love the Twin Cities, but I just can't handle eight months of winter anymore. So I got to get back to LA. You know, it's, I'm actually late because my garden should be in already out in LA because it's spring, for gosh sakes. I love saying that here in Minnesota. Thank you all very, very much. If you have any other questions, I'll be around. Good luck. Good luck with your remodeling project.